So this is Professor BRB, and today we'll be learning to create a multi-state object with both a picture and a text frame. And uh, let's see how this works. This is a single page document, and uh, when I click on these little thumbnail buttons here, you can see that the picture and the text frame both change. And this is done creating a multi-state object. Let me show you what that is. Uh, once again, this is a one-page InDesign document. And if I click on this and make sure I'm in digital publishing, you can see I have a multi-state object here. If I go into my object states panel, uh, each one of these cells represents a different state for this multi-state object. And we're going to be learning how to create this, how to add something to the state once it's created, and how to create the button navigation buttons. So let's get started. If you want to work along with me, you can download this file and the picture we'll be using at artpoints.net for free. Uh, there is a link on the video notes. Uh, to allow you to do that. Otherwise, you can just use your own files. This is a one-page document, and um, we are going to create our multi-state object on this single page. Uh, if we look at our Layers panel, there are two layers, a layer containing the type frames, which I'm going to turn off, and a layer for the images. So I'm going to, right now, uh, just work in the images layer and make sure that that is selected. And there's also a background layer which is locked. So the first thing we're going to do is import our images. Choose your rectangle frame tool and drag out a frame on your images layer. It can go onto the pasteboard and if you click your up arrow button on your keyboard once it will divide that frame in half horizontally. And then if you click your right arrow button one, two, three times, it will divide into eight image frames. I'm going to release that. I now have eight frames here. And I'm going to deselect and go to File place in order to find my pictures. Uh, they are in this folder, UK MSO images. Select them all, open, and now I can just click on each one of these frames. And there we go. Now the image is not exactly fit to the frame the way that I want, so selecting all of the frames, I am going to change the frame fitting options. So if I go to Object Fitting, Frame Fitting Options, I can turn on Auto Fit. Fill frame proportionally, very important to use proportionally, and I want to make sure that the crop amount is set at zero on all four fields. And then click OK. And now you can see my images are filling up my frames very nicely. Um, the next thing I want to do is stack all the frames on top of each other. And up here I see my align controls are showing. If they're not, I can find them under Window, Object, and Layout, Align. It's the same thing. You can find it either way. If I just click once here, and once here, Align to Top. All of my images are now stacked on top of each other, and I can move them down, and drag this corner out to the size that I want. Say right about there. Notice that my uh, pictures resize because I turned on auto fit. 
And if it bothers you that the pictures look pixelated here, you can go to View Display Performance, High Quality Display, and that clears them up right there. Uh, next, we want to create our buttons down at the bottom, and we're going to fill those with thumbnails of these same pictures. So, Rectangular Frame Tool, dragging out the whole area that I want the buttons to, to fill. With my mouse button still pushed down, I click my up arrow key once and my right arrow key three times to create eight frames. I'm going to put a rounded corner on those frames by going to Object Corner Options and turning on rounded corner here, 12 pixels is fine. We'll click OK. And now I want to do the same thing I did before and go to Object Fitting, Frame Fitting Options with them still selected, turn on Auto Fit, Fill Frame Proportionally, and Crop Amount Zero so that my photos will fit beautifully into those little frames without me having to individually adjust them. File, Place, Open, and here I can just click on each one of these and notice, oops daisy there I got a little bit off on that one. That's fine. Command Z does the job. And now I have my little thumbnail buttons. To select this stack of frames right here and create my multi-state object, I go to my selection tool and drag across to select them all. And now, um, making sure of course we're in our digital publishing workspace, that's very important, I choose Object State Panel. And with those selected, right down here at the bottom, there's a button, Convert Selection to Multi-State Object. Just click on that once, and you can see that now I have states here, and they are all described. And the first thing I'm noticing is that they are not in the order of my buttons here. And I can reorder them by just dragging them and getting them in the order that I want, which is very easy to do once the uh, multi-state object is created. And let's just go ahead and do that. Now they're in the order that uh, my buttons are. It's a good idea to name your multi-state object. I'm going to call that England Photos. Uh, and you do not need to name your states, but it can make it easier when you're creating your buttons. So I'm going to give these short names. That's British Museum, Big Ben, Hampton Court, Stonehenge, This is Q for Q Gardens, and this is Oxford. That only took a minute, and it, it's really quite helpful when we start making our buttons, uh, which you will shortly see. So let's close that panel for the moment. And now we want to make our buttons. So here let's just select this first button and open our Buttons and Forms panel. Type Button. Name, I'm going to name my buttons. This is going to be uh, British M for British Museum, Event, On Release or Tap, Actions, Go to State. And now notice my multi-state object, England Photo, comes up. If I had more than one in the document, I'd be able to choose between them, but I only have one. And I can choose between all these different states. And I want to choose British Museum, create a rollover state here, 
And to make it look a little different, I'm going to make the opacity 50% and then go back to the normal state. And I have to just go through exactly the same process with all eight buttons. Type all eight. I'm going to call this Big Ben Action Go to State and choose the state Big Ben. Rollover state, make it look a little bit different. 50%, hit return, and back to the normal state. Uh, and you just go through exactly this process. I'll do the first four buttons on camera and then, oops, a daisy here. Then I'll just finish up the second four. Uh, this is Q. Go to state. Choose my state here. You can see why it's handy to have your states named. Normal state, 50%. Hit return. Back. One more here. Type button. Stone hands. Action. Go to state, choose the state, Stonehenge, and create the rollover. So I'm going to finish the other four off camera, and you might just want to pause the video and do the other four on your own. The process is exactly the same. Our slideshow should be working now, so let's preview it by going down to the bottom of Buttons and Forms and clicking Preview Spread. We can drag this window out to make it nice and big so we can really see what we've got. And uh, let's just try hovering over the button, the rollover state works fine. Click on that. That, oops, looks like I made a mistake there. So on this one, I assigned the wrong state. So let's go back and fix that because it's very, very easy to fix your mistakes. So let's go back to this button here. And I guess the green just kind of affected me. So since I chose the wrong one, just choose the right one. And uh, that should do it. So I'm going to save my changes here, and let's go back to preview and see if I fix that mistake. And there we are. So it's very easy to uh, fix things uh, if you make a tiny mistake. Now, the one thing that we want to add now are the text frames here. And we are going to now learn how to add something to a state. So let's go back to our multi-state object here. Close Buttons and Forms, Open Object States. I'm going to choose my first state, British Museum here. And I have previously created the text frames that I want to use here and hidden them inside uh, the type frames layer. So that's turned off right now. I'm going to turn it back on. And you'll see my type frames are all there stacked on top of each other. So I'm going to turn off everything but the British Museum frame. So there's the frame that I want to paste into this state. And it's very easy to add something to a state. I simply select the frame with my selection tool, go edit, cut, open up my object states panel, choose the British Museum state that I want to add it to. And in the object states panel menu, paste into state. So I just go through that same process. Let me move this over here to make it a little easier. 
so I can see my layers panel. And I choose the state Big Ben, and I find the correct text layer here, select, edit, cut, Big Ben, paste into state. My next state is Hampton Court, so um, let's go to that one. I'm going to turn on my Hampton Court text frame, select, cut, make sure that state is selected, paste into state. So you can see in my thumbnails here that my text has been successfully pasted into each state. Let's preview it and see how it looks. It looks great. So there we have created a multi-state object and after creating the slideshow we have pasted text frames into each state. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this lesson and multi-state objects are very versatile and can be used in a number of different ways. I have two other videos uh, in this series that deals with different ways of designing multi-state objects and you might want to look at those as well.